Well, it wasn't that long ago that the insiders were tipping Bongani Baloy as a future leader of the Democratic Alliance. He had been executive mayor of Midval from a 26-year-old, seven clean audits. He was one of the DA's rising stars. Then he left, joined Action SA, provincial head for Gauteng, and then he left. And now he has his own political party. We're going to find out the story of Mr. Beloy in a moment. Well, Gani, thanks for joining us. Uh, Shilova. Did I say it correctly? No, it's a Shilova. Shilova. And what does it mean? It's a, it's a Tsonga uh, language. Uh, the name means flower. So, so the, the birth of this political party for us is a flower to the nation. So it's a gift. And I mean, the flower is something that's beautiful that people look after, that they nourish, they nurture. And it's something that we need to look after to be able to watch it flower, blossom. And also be able to to see its beauty and appreciate its beauty. And any relevance in picking the Tsonga language? Well, it, it's very important. So in the journey to start a new political party, it was clear for me that I must uh, dedicate the name to an African indigenous language. And one of the, the, the languages I felt is important is the Tsonga language. In so far as if you look at how um, there's been uh, contradictions and conflict in amongst Africans themselves, uh, as a consequence of many factors by people pitting us together I mean, uh, amongst each other to fight each other, and etc. But the Zonga language over a period of time has been one that is seen to be frowned upon. So it was important for me to take one of the languages which uh, some people believe is not an important tribe or language to use it as the, as the name to, 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 to sort of say, look, we, we are Africans together and here's a beautiful language, a beautiful tribe that's part of who we are. And it's quite important to appreciate that as I do a fundamental departure from conventional politics, as opposed to naming this the African Union of Freedom Fighters, and as an example, I said, no, 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 I'm going to go back to my roots and name it in an African indigenous language. And the headband? The headband is mkele. It signifies many things, but for me, the most simplistic meaning of it is that visual expression and uh, of my of my roots of being an African person and being proud of my heritage and African sense as well. So that, that's the, the very simplistic meaning to that. So I, I took a, a journey, um, I mean, a few years ago of, of sort of going back and understanding who I am, where I come from, and I've been raised in a very cultural and traditional home. And I often found that uh, Africans, though I found myself a bit schizophrenic, in, in public and in the economy, in workspaces, I am something else. At a home, I'm a Bongani who's cultural, who's traditional, and who embraces who they are. And, I, and I've never understood why the Bongani at home cannot be the Bongani in the economy. Why my language does not have economic value and, and why I must always assimilate other cultures and forego my own culture. So I really felt there's something wrong. And for me, it's a growing sense and I have a voice that has been growing more and more as I grow and as I see things differently, as I research, as I read, as I critic things and I think about things differently and learn and unlearn. So I felt it's quite important for me as a point of departure, the name has to speak to who I am. And the appearance, I must keep reinforcing this identity that I have, that I am very proud of. Mm. Well, that uh, certainly makes you distinctive. Uh, I hope it's, uh, well, I'm not a hope, but is it real leopard skin or faux leopard skin? I know the Shembe religion have now brought in faux leopard skin because of animal rights concerns. No, this is a, a, a real leopard skin. Um, it's something that has been in our family for, for a number of years as well, so a heritage as well. I'm coincidentally part of the Shemri religion as well. Uh, I'm also a believer as well. So so it was easier just using something that I am. So I sought something that I must just depart and go procure an identity, but actually this is the Bumani at all. Yours is an incredible journey and very different. And I can understand when you said earlier that you want to remake politics or change politics because you were on the fast track. Uh, if if one goes back to your time at the DA to be the mayor of the only municipality in Gauteng that the DA was running, mm. and as a 26-year-old taking over there, and then running it extremely well, most uh, insiders said, well, here's a man destined for the top. Why leave? And then secondly, 
join Action SA and then thirdly leave Action SA because I guess people are looking at you and saying, mm, is this guy ever going to stick around? Yeah, look, um, that that was uh, uh, one of the the uh, things I thought about long and hard about the perception from externally, and and I believe that um, since being in the DA, and and I must say I'm I'm really proud of the time I had in the DA, and I will remain eternally grateful for the platform, for the support, and the colleagues that one still has in the DA and the friends that are still there. So, but. Personally, I mean, the, the interesting contradiction is the, the perception externally from people and your internal understanding of your purpose and your own journey as well and how you see it manifest. So the DA period for me, now I understand, I understand it as a phase, as an important uh, foundational phase for my career, which gave me stability to learn the most important thing, which is governance. Uh, and I mean, I, I attribute to the DA era to to understanding and crystallizing governance of public institutions and 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 also working within an established political party. So there are some factors for me that triggered and, and made me realize that the Democratic Alliance isn't a, a vehicle which I believe is now, uh, has the potential and capacity to take to be a government of a majority in South Africa, uh, both from some of the objective factors and subjective factors in the DA and the departure of key leaders and the adoption of key policies and, 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 uh, and approaches. And also, in my view, what I see is the regression of, of, of uh, uh, the, 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 the regression of a, an ambition, if you, <clears throat> if you like, to pursue and become a nation, a government of majority, uh, and as opposed to coalition of other factors as well. Uh, so, so I understood that I needed to start and finish my term in the DA. And, and I did that. And because I was also in government, I also appreciated that I need to do a clean handover. So it means I have to finish what I've started. And because I worked so hard in the institution on the back of others, I mean, I was quite uh, fortunate because I don't think many mayors uh, really appreciate taking over municipality from another mayor colleague who has really laid the foundation for you to succeed. And building from that foundation and being able to hand over to the next person to succeed. And I think one has, has had the advantage of doing exactly that. Uh, because I was able to give what uh, in a, an institution which was in a better situation that I, I had inherited it. And Timothy Ness had done exactly that from Marty Wagner. So I took over, then built, and then uh, left in a solid position, and I continued the, the trajectory of growth and sound and stable government. So so then for me, I knew that my, 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 my stay in the day had come to an end, and that's why I waited for the elections to come and go. I handed over the municipality. There was no internal instability. There was no issues around the governance and sustainability of the institution because it, it, when an individual leaves, institutions must outlive an individual. So, so then for me, it was clear that now I can leave responsibly and pursue my, my other objective. And what excited me with the Herman project was that it was a clean canvas and one could really paint and then color it in as you see and also attribute and contribute uh, thoughts which can easily manifest in a new party as opposed to an established party because the beauty with new institutions is that they can still be shaped and you can still define the organizational character, the purpose, but equally you can also define uh, the, the, the key strategic goals or the how you see the world from that basis. So that was quite exciting. And obviously, uh, as you enter a new environment, things change. It's a new political party. Uh, you, we are building as we are going. There's issues of some challenges of finances. You've got a backer who's very strong uh, financially. Uh, who's the leader of the party as well, but also has strong views as well. And and you think that, you know, you'll be able to work within the organization and really persist and shape an organization. And I wasn't, uh, um, uh, I, I was alive to the fact that politics is about the battle of ideas, that uh, there's there's no political leader, including myself, who is a walkover when it comes to contestations of ideas that you believe as right. So I never thought uh, that it would just be a smooth sailing road. I ex anticipated engagements and, and battles of thought and naturally challenging each other in such an environment. And and my experience just changed, uh, 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 I mean, after a short while, which led to my departure. So that's why leaving Action SA, uh, I mean, DA, and leaving uh, Action SA as well, my reasons were public as well. I think most of Action SA, what triggered it is a conversation that uh, Herman asked to have with me while I was still the uh, provincial chairperson of Action SA. And in his opening remarks for the purpose of the meeting, he alluded to the fact that 
he does not uh, trust me and our relationship has deteriorated. And the reasons he advances for that is that we know, apparently, according to him, we no longer call each other, which points to the fact that the relationship has deteriorated. But equally, he believes that uh, because of the comments I had made at a Senate meeting before that meeting, which were not in support of uh, an issue that was being raised, and I was quite vocal about that, as I was numerous times at the DA, but no leader in the DA called me aside to say, uh, because of the comments you made, I think our relationship has deteriorated. So I found that quite alarming. And more so than when you say, for those reasons, you want to move me as the chairperson of, of Houting, but then subsequently appoint me as the national spokesperson. So, so for me, it did not make any sense. Whereas the national spokesperson works day to day with the leader of the party to communicate, to defend, to respond to issues that he might have said or what the party believes or communal messages of the party. So for those same reasons I said to him, first I dispute the fact that we no longer trust each other. I thought that as we mature and start engaging, we will differ. And I never understood the differences to mean that we don't trust each other. Uh, and when, when we engaged, we said you want strong people around you. And now that I'm actually sharing my opinion and where I differ with you fundamentally and what I believe is wrong things, and you can uh, then characterize that as a relationship broken down. But because you are the leader and it's your prerogative to appoint me in this position, I accede to your request to to remove me as a provincial chairperson, but I'm going to apply my mind uh, on the offer to be appointed as national spokesperson. And that for me, and I, I even mentioned to him that for the same reasons that you're advancing to remove me from the position of the national, I mean, uh, uh, provincial chairperson, the sa for the same reasons, you can't appoint me as a national spokesperson. So, so it was clear. I, I've had issues with his his office, and I used to refer to his office as the presidency. And I said, as the provincial chairperson of Gauteng, the same province where the president resides in, it, he the, the office makes it difficult for me to properly coordinate and work with the office of the president. Because one, they don't appreciate that there has to be joint planning. You can't, as a president, where you've got a national, uh, I mean, when we're the president and you've got a uh, provincial uh, chairperson, just decide to do events without joint planning or engagement. So that because we need to rally the structures and myself to be there with you. You can't be the first respondent on things when I am there. So it means that we're effectively competing for space and that does not bode well because people who've got nefarious intentions come into that gap and they start manipulating. So so then easily, I mean, I mean, so something people can just make allegations about me as they did there that I am pro ANC, I'm pro this, I'm pro this. But no one actually gave me an opportunity to to accuse me so I can equally respond and be able to defend myself. So those perceptions lasted as a consequence of a deteriorating mm. uh, relationship between the office of the president and the, the chairperson position because we, we have to work together. Nicely put. Uh, and I think that does certainly lay it out. Politics is dirty. Though. It, no matter where you go in uh, from our side and and ask various questions, Gaten McKenzie versus DA versus... Mm. A and C, and it it just seems like you come across as a really integrous, but like Muzi Maimani, uh, honest guy. Uh, you you religious clearly, as is Muzi. Is this the right world to be in, or what's pulling you into this this crazy area where it seems there are more devils than angels? Precisely for the fact that there's more dev devils than angels, uh, and it's a space which uh, shapes. All of all aspects of our lives, one way or another, and our society is a consequence of politics. Our economy is a consequence of politics. Whether you open your tap and you find clean water or grey water, it's a consequence of politics. I mean, our interview was slightly late today as a consequence of politics with load shedding and all of these things. So it requires men who are capable, who are disciplined and committed to enter that space to be able to preside over the state and create a better a material environment for the rest of us. So so it's men who, who are not afraid to risk it and try again. I mean, I was telling somebody the other day that uh, um, I, I was stupid enough to, to leave the DA and equally stupid enough to leave uh, Action SA and, and stupid enough to try again with another political party. Mm. Uh, and But I, th I really think that those two experiences have been valuable experiences on both the uh, uh, journeys from Action SA, DA, it was, it was mutually beneficial in terms of value add and the, when what I derived from an experience, exposure point of view and a learning environment point of view. So so it, I'm very proud of those two areas, however long, short, those things.
But I think it has created a solid foundation for me to be able to embark on this journey that I'm in now and, and to be able to really find a niche in the market of something I really believe in. And I really believe that someone has to appeal for people who believe in what I believe and awaken others who have not really appreciated that the voice inside, deep inside of themselves, that really more pushes them towards what I believe in as well. What is your view then on the multi-party charter for South Africa? Uh, given that you're a new party, uh, Shiluva is just out of the starting blocks really, would you be joining or considering joining that group? Because it does appear as though you are closer to their line of thinking than the ANC EFF approach. We won't be joining anybody, whether it's the ANC or the multi-party coalition, we won't be joining. We think that it's a bit presumptuous. We have not even tested our message to the electorate to be able to garner support and test what the support is. And it's important for us as we do so, we must do so without any entanglements with anybody. So we can represent ourselves without being linked to so-and-so and linked to so-and-so. And it gives us the space to be able to work and, and, and clarify and crystallize our message and our values and what we believe in and what our value proposition to the country is going to be. So w- when it comes after the election, when we've seen what the figures are saying, I think that's a totally different ball game by then. But between now and then, we will not be engaging with anybody. So what are your targets what do you have to do as a new political party? And it was interesting because we interviewed the um, leader of Arise SA. Again, like you, young, uh, very articulate, very impressive on their own. But of course, one doesn't know about the appeal for the broader public. What, what is, what are, where are you going to from here? Look, the, the first test for us is to is to meet the the preconditions set by IEC of getting fifteen percent of registered voters per province, and I think that's very important because it's not speculative, but it's about the ability to get on the ground and speak to fifteen thousand people minimum. In Gauteng, I think it's about fifteen thousand three hundred, and and we're almost at eighty percent. And we started this three weeks ago in Gauteng. Wow. We are moving in Limpopo. We are moving in Pumalanga. We are moving in KZN. Uh, we're only we're only starting next week in the Eastern Cape, and the Western Cape will probably do in the second week of October. So, so then there's two other provinces that are lagging behind, and and that for us is going to give us a real sense to to understand what we are looking at. So, if we can achieve that first milestone, I mean, getting fifteen percent as a minimum from our side, as an exercise one, the exercise demonstrates our ability to be on the ground physically with the growing membership, membership that speaks to registered voters, that registers new voters and gets them to consent and support our 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 our, our memorandum and our uh, uh, signatures that we need to submit to the IEC. For us, that, that, that will demonstrate our, our relevance on the ground and our support on the ground, but most importantly, our ability to be present in as much as places uh, across the country. For us, that's the first true test. I mean, the easiest part is just getting the 1,500 signatures to establish a political party. But I think the ne- this necessary milestone set by the, I mean, preconditions set by the IAC is a very important one because it must filter those who have got uh, capacity and those who are serious players and those who are just uh, frivolous players. In the but I really think uh, from that point of departure, we'll be able to get a true sense of what we expect and set our titles carefully. Where these are big numbers that you're talking about, where are you drawing them from? Traditionally, uh, what parties did they vote for? Well, interestingly, we, we are attracting a lot of young people. We are also attracting a lot of our parents because our message is centered towards uh, parties established by young people and the future for young people and the concerns our parents have because these young people that we speak to when you're speaking about stats. Well, we say 60% of young people are unemployed. They've got a mother, they've got a father. And if they, the six, uh, I mean, stats essay will also tell us that 60% of those young people come from single parent household, which is our mothers. So we're targeting mainly and drawing our, our young people and our parents. And our parents, the majority is a single parent, a single parent, which is the mother. And we're also drawing the grandmother as well. So we, in, in Houting, how the, the trajectory of Houting is very different compared to the rural areas. In the rural areas, the I mean, the metros were growing all over the place, predominantly in townships and in informal areas. 
uh, and in the uh, in in the rural areas, we are starting from the urban peri- I mean, sorry, the peripheries. In in Pumalang, as an example, we started in the Kovasi region, which is a uh, I mean, just on the border of uh, Mozambique and the country. Uh, in the case that then we started on the side of Pomondo, uh, uh, Josini side. So it's very interesting that we are starting from the peripheries and slowly moving through to the urban centers. What is more interesting is the fact that uh, for 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 me for Black South Africans, right, uh, and unfortunately for white people don't count in this case. When it comes to long weekends, you will find many Black South Africans on the N1, N3, N4, N14, N N1. All going back to their traditional homesteads, so so we find that we are growing there first in the rural areas, and it's slowly going to then find each other uh, will, will, will manifest in the urban metropolises, either Etewini, either the city of Cape Town, Bomela, Nelspruit, uh, Bloemfontein, and so on. So it's an interesting trajectory because we start from the periphery in the rural areas and are starting to move in. So we're going from village to village, and the rural voter is the most neglected voter. Uh, also precisely because to get a rural voter per per end spend, you spend more to get a rural voter as opposed to spending per um, in the metropolis area because of densities and all of these things. How are you getting funded? We're doing it ourselves at this stage. I've been the, the main funder of this party. And I mean, if you ask how much I've put in, it's no more than what I've loaned the party about 230,000. Uh, you speak of credit card overdraft, a uh, bit of pension that one has. And, and, and for me, it has been important to try and keep the party uh, as, as, as nimble as possible. Uh, so we, we don't lose our strategic thrust because the one thing I've observed with monies coming into the party, you might lose or move away slightly from your strategic thrust to compensate for the views of those who want to fund you at this stage. And fortunately, our membership fee is 20 rand. So they have been starting to trickle in. Uh, I've never been so excited and overjoyed to see a number of 20 rands into our, our bank account that are starting to come in. And fortunately, we're getting now uh, 10,000 rands here, 20,000 rands here. We're getting people buying us T-shirts and a number of things. So it's starting to build nicely and our members are buying T-shirts for themselves as well. I mean, in Edgar Lenny last week uh, with about 500 members, each of them put in uh, uh, 35 rand per T-shirt and they bought uh, the number of T-shirts themselves. So it's starting to grow and when people start to take ownership of this, I mean, it's really enabling us. Our biggest cost at this day, I think, is my transport cost. Just trying to move around from one point to the next point to the next point. And now it has been pamphlets. Uh, we spent about 20,000 rands on pamphlet uh, to try and uh, get across different parts. So so it's quite interesting. The more we get, we'll get some, we increase in invest. We've noticed that the more we invest, we invest 20,000, the return on investment becomes about 35,000. So we're, we're trying to really keep, I mean, uh, going into a separate thing and, trying to increase uh, the returns on our investment. So when do we check back with you on whether this uh, party is indeed going to be a force to be reckoned with in 2024? How long are you giving yourself to really know where you're going to be? We, we will know uh, before the, 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 the president of the country uh, delivers a state of the nation address, we would have a very strong inclination of where we are going. Ongani Beloy, the founder of Shiluva, new political party, a man with a, a wonderful pedigree. It's lovely to see him popping up, looking after his own uh, ideas into the future. We look forward to catching up with him again in the next few months. And I'm Alec Hogg from biznews.com.